The state of emergency extended for a fourth time in Myanmar, two and a half years after it was first imposed, following a coup that saw the removal of an elected civilian government. And more on that extension of the state of emergency, we're joined by Amara Tiha. He is a doctoral researcher at the Peace in Research Institute, Oslo. Mr. Amara, earlier we spoke to our correspondent. He said in some ways this was no surprise, another extension. But he said there was some bafflement at the fact that the military, by extending the state of emergency a fourth time was violating its own constitution that it wrote in 2008. But for you, no surprises. I'm not surprised at all about the extension. And because it's already reinterpret the what's the usual situation, and they have used the usual situation clause for the extension. And in addition to that, there are the three key reasons, not because I'm not uh, surprised at all. First, more than 30% of the regions are directly affected by the conflict, which is a main reason for the regime to extend, and this conflict will continue. Second, the pace of the election preparation is slow. There will be a census, the announcement of the constituency, and the security situation. With this given security context, we are not going to see an election anytime soon. This is a second reason. The finally, the regime will wait for 2020 election result to be expired in 2025. That is to avoid the legitimacy contestation if the election happened earlier. So I expect the extension every six months until 2025. And I'm not surprised about the extension at all. All right, but between now and 2025, there was a little bit of hope because we had heard tidbits of information. For example, our correspondent mentioned as well, uh, tomorrow is the start of the Buddhist Lent period. Uh, there will be the unveiling of what he told us was the largest sitting Buddha statue. And with such big projects, you often have very big amnesties, which might include the release into house arrest of Ms. Aung San as well as two other members of her deposed cabinet. So taking all these messages into consideration, there was hope that maybe the military government might be considering a change in strategy to appease maybe some critics. But for you, do you see any real change in who is managing Myanmar right now and in the months ahead up to 2025? Of course, there have been rumors circulating about, you know, Aung San relocation in past weeks. And it's because it coincided with the new pagoda inauguration, which is going to be happening tomorrow. And of course, religion events always accompanied by the mass MSD. But, you know, it was fueled by the recent Thai foreign minister visit and meeting with Aung San Suu Kyi, of course. But even if her release, if it's happened and it's made not in the ongoing crisis that, you know, conflict was still going on. But we could be seen as a strategic move of the military to mitigate the international pressure. Of course, Myanmar military is known to operate its own terms, timeline and the game plan. And then that is not directly related to the international pressure, but trying to mitigate the possible pressure, including sanctions. So. If we experience tomorrow or maybe in sooner, any changes are part of the reaching strategy, but the conflict will going on and then we were not going to see much uh, changes on the ongoing crisis in Myanmar. So ASEAN has made very little headway with this five-point peace plan, but we have seen actual movement, although not everyone agrees that they would see these as positive movements. So, for example, China up north, a negotiating between both the military government in Myanmar as well as the, the armed the the EA or the the armed organisations that ethnic armed organisations that are fighting, you've got the Chinese government, uh, the Myanmar government visiting Yunnan province. That's up north. Down south, you've got the Thai foreign minister actually being given permission to meet Ms. Aung San Suu Kyi earlier this month, early this month, in fact. So movements bilaterally up north down south. Is this the way ahead to make progress where ASEAN doesn't seem to be making that kind of progress? First of all, I mean, the, the crisis in Myanmar impacts ASEAN member states 
differently. And Indonesia tried to tackle the structural issues through the dialogue with the different stakeholders during his, their chairmanship. And then they made a lot of engagement with the non-state actors and NUG and other different stakeholders. However, for the Thailand, they experienced the crisis in first-handed daily and they don't have that much freedom like Indonesia, and they are looking for more you know, immediate concern that's impact around their border. Same thing applied to China. So when Laos assume the chairmanship in a few months, they may have their own strategy. That doesn't mean that ASEAN five-point consensus is not working. It should be the guiding process. It is still on. Both China, Thailand, and, and you know, even the Western countries are considered ASEAN five-point as a guiding and but the primary goal should be the escalation and the finding the pragmatic solution to end the crisis in Myanmar. I mean, of course, you know, it cannot be realized and without the bilateral engagement. And then this is where the China, India and Thailand are trying to get involved and trying to de-escalate because they experience the crisis in first hand. So a final question here, and very briefly, Mr. Amara. So the five-point plan, that's a guideline, principles that we should all be following to de-escalate. But the actual implementation, only neighbours who have something to lose by failing to de-escalate, such as Thailand, such as China, they are the ones who actually have the real power and the will to execute. True. That is true. Because the neighbouring states have the leverage and they experience the crisis day to day. And a lot of political actors are you know, doing all the actions and meetings along the Thai-Myanmar border, Thai-China border, and the India-Myanmar border. So these, are the, these three states are the countries that can change the situation on the ground. And they are the leading sphere try to de-escalate the situation on Myanmar. Oh, thanks so much for joining us, Mr. Amara Thiha, doctoral researcher at the Peace Research Institute, Oslo.